Oh, how we doing? I'm not gonna waste your time. We're gonna talk about getting good looking, accurate skin tones in Premiere Pro. Here we are in our project over here. I go click this little baby icon down here, new item, adjustment layer. Same size as our sequence, of course, okay. I drag this little adjusty over here and then I just kind of stretch it out a little bit. Now I like to pick a clip that's kind of neutral and hopefully somewhat similar to most of the project. Obviously if you're doing some stuff indoors, maybe some outdoors or just different locations completely, it's gonna take more time. It's gonna be more of a challenge. So I have a custom workspace setup called Color Babies. And this is just my, my little color grading setup. I have waveforms here, vector scope here. Vector scope is really the key thing for getting good skin tones. If you see this line here going up on the top left, this is your skin tone line. Basically you want your skin to ride that line. <laughs> this would sound so weird if you're not a filmmaker. You want your skin to ride the line, boy. So over in effects, we're gonna get film convert. That's what I use to color grade, don't judge me. If you don't use film convert, you just go ahead, put your LUTs on or do whatever you do to your image to get it pretty much how you want it to look. When I'm grading with Film Convert, I try to just use the film stock that will give me the most natural looking skin tone possible. Sometimes if you just bring your highlights down with the slider, it doesn't actually get the highlights to stop clipping. So I just reset that and I just put this little curve on it. A little bit of a curvy boy. Get my mid-tones back. There we go, now they're not clipping. And you can see our shadows are pretty lifted. Since we have a lot of black in the image, I wanna get those down a little bit. Sometimes I just use my eyeball and I just try to make sure that nothing's going below zero or above 100. So we have our basic balance with Film Convert and we have a solid looking image. So now I'm gonna take Lumetri Color, drop it right beneath Film Convert, and now we're gonna get the skin tones dialed in, baby. So what we wanna do is go to HSL Secondary, set color, and you wanna pick your skin. I try to pick a part of the skin that just looks similar to the entire face because we do have variations in our faces. So just try to pick like a normal looking splotch of skin. It gives us these three parameters here. And what you wanna do is hit show mask. And right now it shows that we have nothing selected except this little tiny blotch over here. All you wanna do is start to mess with these three sliders and try to completely key your skin. There we go. So basically I just mess with this, try to get the skin as filled in as possible without it spilling onto other things in the background. So that's about as good as it's gonna get and that looks great actually. So now I go down to blur and I usually do 30%. That just means you're gonna be safe if you didn't perfectly key out your skin. It just kind of puts a feather over that mask or that key, whatever you wanna call it. There won't be any blotches or random color patterns on the skin tone. So now I'm gonna go to crop, throw a crop on the, in, on the footage itself, not on the adjustment layer. Now what I do is I just drag these to be just over the face, just the skin tone. And basically that means the vector scope is only gonna see skin tone and nothing in the background. And that's what we want. So now what I do is I go to this here wheel, which is under these skin tone selection parameters. And basically now if your skin tones are off, you can start to move this slider around and <laughs> totally key out the face. You can go full Thanos. And typically I just like, push mine a little bit into the same direction as that vector scope skin tone line. And you'll be able to tell with your eye too if it starts to look wonky. Like that's straight up Oompa Loompa. I usually have the skin tone a little bit to the right of that line, just like barely like hanging on the right side of the line. And that's what we have so far. So here's without Lumetri, here's with it. It already looked good before. This just kind of killed a little bit of the magenta and made it more saturated. It's a little too saturated for me. It looks like I put a teal orange LUT on and I don't want that look. So you can just go to your saturation down here and it's only gonna reduce the saturation of your skin because it's part of that mask. So let's try 80%. That's looking pretty good. There is one more thing you can do with that HSL tool that we just worked through. What I do is I click on Lumetri, I copy it, click back in here, paste it again. This time, we're gonna go into these settings, we're gonna invert the mask. So now, if you show the mask, it's selecting everything except for the skin tones. So all the background is now selected. I'm gonna put my saturation back to 100 because it's everything in the background. Right now, it's making the background orange, as you can see. 
what I like to do is dip this into the blue just a little bit. If you go down here, you're gonna look like every freaking filmmaking YouTuber on the planet. So we're gonna go up here toward the center, the balance. So this is with, without, with, without. So this is film convert, skin tone adjustment, shadow adjustment. Now the most challenging part can be moving this grade to a different clip. So this is the same exact grade as before. If we mute it, that's the log. This is that grade we did on the indoor shot. I'm gonna mute the shadow lumetry. We're gonna check on the skin tone lumetry. We're gonna show our mask. I'm gonna take off the 30% blur, just go to zero. And you can see that most of the skin is not being selected. That's the challenge, is just checking your individual clips if you want perfect skin in every single clip. We're just gonna slide these parameters around, just find that sweet spot of my little face. That's a great selection. Let's do 30% blur again. And we're gonna turn off our mask. It's very subtle, but when we activate that skin tone adjustment, it just makes it a little bit more golden looking. Also, it looks like the skin is a little bit overexposed here. And what you can do in the same wheel that you change the color of the skin, you can pull this brightness slider down and get a little bit more detail back in the face. You gotta be hearing this. This is great. Before and after. Before and after. It just, ah, uh, just, it looks significantly better once you get it dialed in. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully this helps you get the skin tones you've always desired. And this is nice because it can work with any camera. Best of luck to whatever you're creating. If you wanna follow my journey, I'm right here, baby. I make filmmaking videos. That's it. See ya. Wow, you watched till the end of the video. Thank you so much. These wonderful people on the screen are my patrons, and I'd like to shout out two of my top tier patrons. Those who pay $9 or more per month to support me and my children. Thank you to Brandon Steger and Andrea. I appreciate you both very much. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next internet movie video. Uh, bye.